Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Just waiting for some others to come up. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. It's so wonderful to see you guys. Hallelujah. God bless you, Craig. God bless you, Herman. Brother Herman. God bless you, Brother Boogie. It's good to see you guys. I'm just waiting for a few more to come up. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Mario, God bless you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for um, tuning in. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Just waiting for a few minutes, <laughs> a few more. I didn't expect so many people to come that, that quick, but God bless you. God bless you. I'm so glad to see you guys. Um, we're going to be speaking about the price of freedom, about the price of freedom, okay? We're going to be, God bless you. God bless you, man of God. It's good to see you. Uh, we're going to be speaking about the price of freedom. The price of freedom. There is a price. People don't realize it, but there's a price to be free. There's a price to be free. Um, I've been gone for a long time. Was um, going through warfare. Warfare, of course, you know, but that's part of the process. That's part of what we have to go through in order for us to get to our destination. I'm going to turn this down a little bit. It's part of what we have to go through. But God is in the midst. It's all about preparation. It's all about... Um, bringing us to our rightful place in him and so i'm just thankful for god that he has chosen me to suffer for this hour for this season for his purpose and for his meaning it's all about him and that's what i wanted to say that it's all about him so we're going to go into exodus today i'm going to do a little bit of um, ephesian but i'm going to go into exodus today and i'm going to deal with freedom the price of freedom because you know a lot of people um even when you want to help them get free they don't want to be free because they don't want to deal with the responsibility of freedom because there's a responsibility when it comes to being free people don't realize that and a lot of people have um been satisfied with being bound because they like the onions <laughs> you know they like the onions that the that the egyptians give they like all of the stuff that the egyptians give um while they are in egypt but you know you you're not free unless you are doing what God has designed you to do. And I know there's a season, there are there's a time, there's a there's a there's a um, season and a time for all of us to be free. But in the in the process of time, when God makes you full, when He makes you complete, when He makes you all that He wants you to be, He wants you to go and tell somebody else that freedom is worth the price. It's worth what you have to go through. It's worth what you have to be, <laughs> what you have to um, pay. It's worth it. It's worth it. Okay. So let's go on. I'm going to go to Exodus, Exodus, Exodus. I'm going to tell you guys, this has been one heck of a journey. And I mean, when I say it's been one heck of a journey, it's been one heck of a journey. Um, why? Because sometimes, you know, when we get saved, when we get saved, um, we don't realize what salvation really is. We think being saved um, is going to church. It's more than that. It's more than that. It's a whole lot more than that. You know, it's a lot of people go to church, but they're not saved, okay? Um, God bless you, um, Sister Catherine. I'm so glad to see you, woman of God. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining me on the day. Um, you know, we think that when you get when you get saved, it's all about going to church, you know, sitting in somebody's sanctuary. But it's, it's more than that because we know and we understand that 75 to 80 percent of the church is going to hell from the church house. So it's not about church. It's about our heart and whether or not God was born inside of it. You know, there are many people that have been born and cultivated by religion. And then there are those of us, and I know as many of you out there, um, that have been born out of the heart of God. And we have been born out of love. Hallelujah. God bless you, Sister Iris Bia. I'm so happy to see you, sis. God bless you. Thank you for joining me. Um, so I'm going to be coming from Exodus. Exodus, the, um, the sixth chapter, I'm going to start there. And then I'm going to go into the seventh chapter about when Moses was telling Pharaoh to let God's um, people go when Pharaoh 
would not let God's people go, okay? So I'm going to deal with that aspect, but it's not just Pharaoh in the church. It is the systems of this world. You know, I'm going to tell you something. When I first came back to Virginia, I heard a song in my dream, and my mom was still alive at this present time, and I called her and I asked her what did the song mean, and it was called Dixieland, and I had never really heard that song, didn't know the meaning of that song, but it had a lot to do with slavery. And um, so I called my mom and I asked her, God bless you, sis, it's so good to see you. I called my mom and I asked her, I said, Mom, you ever heard that song Dixieland? She said, well, Gaylane, that got something to do with the slaves, you know, um, because a lot of the slave owners used to sing that song. But, you know, I didn't understand what that meant when I was coming back to Virginia. You know what I'm saying? So this is not just about Virginia. It's about a system. It's about a system that has um, held people captive for millenniums. It's been holding people captive for millennium. God bless you, Sister Peaches. I'm so glad to see you, woman of God. And congratulations on your graduation. I'm glad. I'm, I'm happy for you. And keep going. Keep going, okay? Um, but I just wanted to say that being free comes with a price. It does. It's not easy to be free because number one, you're going to break away from the crowd. And number two, you know, you're going to have Pharaoh come after you because Pharaoh has to be the king, okay? He has to be the Lord, okay? So if we um, give birth to something that is not systematic, that is not something that someone else, I mean, I, I mean, someone has never seen before, then it's going to cause a conflict. It's going to cause some problems because it's causing people to believe beyond where they are. So one of us or all of us, a lot of us have been chosen to do the impossible. God bless you, sis. We have been called to do the impossible. What is the impossible? To believe beyond what we can see, to believe beyond what we understand, to believe beyond what we can ever imagine. It's called faith. Faith is the impossible. I remember when I first got saved. I'm just, I'm just giving you a little foundation here because I'm waiting for more to come up. But I, I remember when I first got saved, and God told me that, you know, when I said, God, I have to worry about the world. I have to worry about the devil. I got to worry about my flesh. I said, well, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this thing because I got too many things that I have to worry about. I was scared of Satan because that's all the church talked about. I didn't, I didn't know about the world because I still wanted a taste of, you know, drinking and all that kind of stuff and smoking and all that kind of stuff. And, and then at the same time, I, I, I had, I didn't have control over my own flesh. And I knew that the devil could use my flesh against me. You know, he can use the problems that I had not yet conquered against me. But God said, Gabe, don't worry about any of that. I just need you to work on one thing and that's believing me, having faith, believing me. Because Gabe, if you can only believe, you can move mountains. You can cause things to come into existence that would not normally come into existence. It is faith that brings us before the presence of God and it brings God before the presence of the world. Did you hear what I said? It is faith that brings us before the presence of God and brings God before the presence of our of, of the world. It shows the world that we have a God that can be depended upon. Um, yet we do have to go through the slaughter process and the slaughter process is not a nice process but it is all about love. When we love him then we are willing to surrender all. God bless you Sister Gwendolyn. I'm so glad you are joining me on today. Thank God for you. If you can go with me real quick to Exodus. Exodus I'm going to get my Bible ready real quick. Freedom, it comes with a price. It's not, it's not free. You know, I mean, you it's free, but it's not free. It comes with a price. It comes with responsibilities. We have to be responsible when it comes to being free. You know, you just can't let everybody be free because people have to know the boundaries. They have to know which lines to cross and what not to cross. It's like growing up as a child. You know, when you get when you when you get um, come out of your mother's womb, they have to give you the boundaries. You know, those of us that have good household. And again, I want to say. Thank you to everyone that's up here. And I want to say to my family, my blood family, I love you guys. I love you because you have been a supportive group. And even though you never understood, you thought what I was doing was crazy, you have supported me. And I just want to thank God for my family. I thank you for my family, saved and unsaved. I thank you for my family. And I ask God to continue to cover them. I love you guys. I love you. You are my family. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead on now after I didn't got that out. Um, and I want to thank God for my husband because he has been through it more than me because you know the head has to go through 
the head goes through worse than we do because they take the first blow. You know, they take, the, yeah, that's why we have to honor our husbands. And God is teaching me this. He's teaching me how to honor because I never had a father and we never had a man in the house. So I'm learning how to honor my husband. I'm learning how to show my husband um, respect in the way that a man should be respected. Um, I love my husband. You know, he's a good man. And so I just, and he's learning how to, um, you know, to cherish his wife, you know, and when you get married, these are things that you have to learn with one another. Yeah, it is. You have to learn it with one another and everybody's different. And, and I don't care if it's your second marriage, your third marriage, your first marriage, you still have to learn the other person. It's not, it's not easy merging with somebody that's not like you. Okay. And the devil uses our differences to try to bring division. He, you, did you hear what I said? He uses our differences to try to bring division. And so you, you, you work on your yourself so God can work on the other partner. You know, we have to work on ourselves. That's what I've been trying to do, work on myself. And it's hard. When you got someone crunching with you, it's hard. But you got to work on yourself. I'm going to Moses, um, um, Exodus, the fifth chapter. Exodus, the fifth chapter. And um, God was calling Moses. He called Moses. God bless you, um, Brother um, Vincent. So good to see you, man of God. Um, God was calling Moses. He called him. He called him so he would go and bring deliverance to his people. Now, see, this is not, this is not, um, let me see if I can get a little bit more light here. This is not something that, um, sorry, you guys. That's a little bit more light for you. Um, he was calling him and in calling him, he, 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 he chose him to bring out a nation. Now, let me tell you what Moses' fear was. It wasn't that Moses, you know, did not understand. God bless you, husband. I'm so glad to see you. Um, it wasn't that Moses did not understand um, that God was God, but he had just met him. You understand? But he knew, he knew Pharaoh because he was raised with him. He knew the system of Pharaoh because he was um, accolated to it. He had became a part of it. He was a part of that system most all of his life until, until he was driven out. So he understood the power of Pharaoh. He understood that, you know, um, that's a whole lot to ask somebody to do, to deliver a whole nation of people from someone you had already been raised with, somebody you already understood the way the system worked, and you don't know this God that is calling you to do this, okay? So God calls people that feel that they are unqualified. They feel that they are insignificant. They feel that they have not the ability to do what God has called or commissioned them to do. He always calls on those that are not arrogant, those that seem to come from low degree, though, because he don't want anybody to glory in his sight. He is the one that gets all the glory. So it's all about him and it's not about us. And so when he called Moses, um, according to this um, Exodus, the fifth chapter, I'm going to read it to you. When he called Moses, he called him to do something that he felt that he was incapable of doing. He was the right man for the job. Why? Because he could not depend on his own abilities. He could not depend on the knowledge that he had of Egypt. He could not depend on the knowledge that he had of Pharaoh. But he could only depend on God because he feared the power of Pharaoh. I understand. I do understand because when God is calling each and one, of, each and every one of us, all of us might not have been called. Many of us have been chosen though. So your choice have already been decided for you. So whether or not you want to be in the position that God calls you to, that's already handled. It's already taken care of because he has elected you. It's God's elect. That means he voted for us. He voted for us to do this thing. And we have a cloud of witnesses that depending on us to do what God has called and ordained and, and qualified us to do. But there is a place. God bless you, baby. I love you. My husband captured enhancement. You know, I just thank God for, you know, for, for, you know, him calling me, but when he called me, I was afraid, just like Moses. And, and, and the more revelation I got, the more insight I got, it didn't matter how close I got to him. You know, it, it, I was scared of what I already understood. And that is the way of the system, whether it be religious systems or whether it be world systems. I knew the way that things work. And God always calls us to do something that we don't have the ability to do. So in this book, in um, chapter 5 I'm going to start at the first verse and it says and afterwards Moses and Aaron went in and the Lord 
and, and told Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Let my people go, that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. Now look now, when they got when they got free, they were going into the wilderness. A lot of people want to be free, but they don't want to go through the process. We got to go in the wilderness. The wilderness is a place where we have to consult him for ourselves. You know, this can't be a, a walk that is built upon um, doctrines of men, um, traditions of men, but it must be something that God has innately um, um, solidified within the corridors of our spirit spirit. So when we are called out of, you know, the way of the world, when we are called out of the systems of religion and God calls us and he said to us, you got to do what I asked you to do. I'm, I'm, I'm developing in you what I created you to be. And I want you to stand firm in what I have designed you to be in spite of the opposition. Don't tell me that is easy because it's not. It's a hard thing that God has asked of each of us. But if we love him, it is love that calls Causes us to walk in obedience. It is love that makes us do the thing that we do not desire to do. But when we asked him, <laughs> why me? You know, why you want me to do this thing? It is because he said, I know you're going to obey me because you love me. The Bible say that if you love me, you're going to keep what I command you to do. If you love me, not only will you keep what I command you to do, but you're going to keep my commandments. And we cannot do this thing in our flesh. All of our flesh is evil. I told my husband that the other day, you know, um, my husband, I love my husband, and, and, and I told him I had to learn the boundary because, you know, when I met my husband, I had already killed my flesh. Yeah, I hated my flesh. My flesh is evil, you understand? My flesh made me do things that I did not like. My flesh made me do things that I hated. And so why would I stand beside something that brought me to a place of disgrace? So when God told me that I had to dismantle myself from the nature of my flesh, that was not easy but it was easy because I wanted what caused me to be separated from those that I love, those that I care about, the thing that, this flesh that make you hurt the very people that you love, this flesh that make you think only about yourself. When he told me that I had to be dismantled, it had to be dismantled. Oh, come on now. Come on. I couldn't wait. Didn't know that the process would be so torturing, so tormenting. But it's a powerful process if you're looking for freedom, if you're looking for freedom. So Moses went into the house of Pharaoh and he said to Pharaoh, he said, look, God said, I want you to let my people go that they might have a feast unto me in the wilderness, in the wilderness, in a place that have not been paved out, in a place where you got to find your direction. You want God want us to have a feast in that place because, number one, we were brought out of the the bondage of captivity to Pharaoh. Pharaoh in the world and Pharaoh in the church. Yeah, there's two Pharaoh. There's one in the world system. Why you think that oblique is in D.C.? That oblique is in D.C. because it is worshiping other gods. Okay? And it is, and it is considered to be the, the house. The, it is considered to be the house of the um the, the the gods the house of the gods and it's also considered to be you know what i'm saying um a, a private area and so that's what that that oblique represent you know a productive part a fertility thing you know but god has called us out of that system yeah a system that we have been bound to from the day of our, our birth yes yeah yeah we have been designed we have been developed we have been shaping in iniquity according to the world system yeah we were born into sin it didn't say we were born to sin, but we were born into sin, but then we were shaping in iniquity. And so because we were shaping in iniquity, oh yeah, we were shaping in iniquity, then we were taught the ways of the world, something that does not include the Lord or God uh, the great I am, the one that is the most high. It did not include him. And though they put in God we trust on the money, it seemed that the money became the God in which man trusts. And so we have to ask God to, you know, when he brings us out, when he calls us out, he's calling us out, y'all. He want his people to serve him. People have served other men of genders. People have served the doctrines of devil. People have served, you know, um, systems that have nothing to do with our 
Savior or your creation, but God is calling us out to be free, free to serve him, free to have a feast unto him in the wilderness. Yeah, it starts with the wilderness. Remember when Jesus went to be baptized by John following the protocol that was already in place, when he went to be baptized by John, now, not that he needed to be baptized, but he followed the protocol, not that he needed to be baptized, but he followed the protocol. And in the protocol, okay, God acknowledged him, God validated him before the forerunner, John the Baptist. Oh yeah, he validated him. He let John know, this is the one that I have um, validated, that I am well pleased in. He validated him. Okay, so that before he validated him, John didn't have no ideal. <laughs> he didn't have no ideal. He knew he was coming. He, he knew he was coming. He knew that he was sent before him. He knew this, but he did not understand that he was going to be beheaded. No, he didn't know that. He didn't have that information. No, no, no. He didn't have that information, but God went on and got rid of his headship, sent him on the glory, uh-huh, before he put a new headship in place. So, uh, yeah, the, the old order went down, and the new order was um, put in place, okay? And so God told Pharaoh in his trembling shoes, him, a man that was learned and taught by great teachers, okay, said that I can't I can't talk to Pharaoh. What am I gonna say? Let's let's go on. He said, and Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I know I understand not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. Neither, he said it, will I let Israel go. You think that the Lord didn't know? That Pharaoh won't gonna let him go. You think that the Lord didn't know that the enemy was gonna come after you too? You think that the Lord didn't know that things were gonna be tight when he called us into this place of salvation, this delivered place, this place that is supposed to bring us into a place of development based on his his purpose for us, based on his thoughts concerning us? You think he didn't know what was gonna happen? He did you think he didn't know you were gonna fall and that you had to get back up because of right this man falls seven times, but he get back up, okay? So you think he didn't know? He knew that the opposition would be great. He knew that it wouldn't be easy to do what he has called us to do, but yet he called us, he chose us to do this thing so others may be free. God bless you, Pastor Kevin. I love you, man of God. I love you. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. Hallelujah. So God knew. He knew that this would be hard. He knew that this would not be easy. He knew that our dependency would have to be on him, that it could not be on ourselves. And I thank God that he has chosen not only me, but many others that will obey because they understand that love make you do what you don't want to do. It is love that compels us to do what we don't want to do. Thank you, Pastor Kevin. I appreciate you. I really do, man of God. And you are a man of God, a powerful man of God. Hallelujah. Thank you. And follow him because he is he's he's awesome. I love this man of God. And that's what I also want to say. I also want to say that, you know, this is when we became one body, when we came into his kingdom, this is how he got rid of the enemy because the enemy divides us by, by female and male. He divides us by, um, um, by white and black. He divides us by money and no money. He divides us by every mean possible. But once we become a part of the kingdom of God, once we become a part of his kingdom, we are no longer divided. We become one blood, one blood, baptized according to him, baptized according to him. And nobody can separate us from one another because we all dwell in him. I thank God for his body, his body. And you know, you have to forgive those that don't understand because Pharaoh didn't understand, did he? The system of this world that was put in place by Satan. Yeah, it was put in place by Satan. And although we upheld it, we uphold it. So good to see you, Prophet Estonia. I'm glad to see you, baby. Um, even though we uphold it, I want to go back one minute to this um, other verse. I want to show you something. When God called Moses. Listen to this. Um, I went back to the, um, chapter 3. I got to show you something real quick. Um, the 13th verse. And Moses said unto God, I want you to see that it's not an easy thing to accept what God asks you to do. Okay? And Moses said unto God, he said unto the Lord, Behold, when... And Moses said unto God, <laughs> Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel 
and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers have sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And he said, And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. You see, he didn't limit himself to anything. He just wanted them to know that he was the great I am. And that means he was going to become anything that was necessary for the deliverance. You hear what I'm saying to you? He was going to become anything that was necessary for the deliverance. So he said, I am that I am. And he said, thus, thus shall thou say unto the children of Israel, I am have sent me unto, <laughs> unto you. And God said un, moreover unto Moses, thus shall thou say unto the children of Israel, the Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob have sent me unto you. This is my name forever. You hear that? He said his name was I am forever. And although they used it, they called him Jehovah when he brought them into the land of promise because he said that's what they called him when he was going into Canaan. They called him Jehovah, Jehovah Jireh. He is that one that will provide for us. He is that one that will make a way out of no way. Listen now. And, and he said, so this is what you want to tell the children of Israel. God of Jacob have sent me unto you. This is my name forever. And this is my memorial unto all generations. So that means it didn't just stop with us. It didn't just stop with us. You understand what I'm saying to you? Hallelujah. God bless you. And so... Moses, who was sent back at um, Exodus, the, um, the um, fifth chapter, Moses, who was sent to Pharaoh to tell him to let God's people go. You think he won't tremble? Yeah, he was. He understood the power of Pharaoh. But you know what I think that is so significant about this story is that God allowed Moses to be raised in the house of his own enemy. He allowed him to be raised so he would understand the territory that he would be sent back to. And even when he brought the children of Israel out, he took them the way that he came, which was through the wilderness to the mountain of Midian. So he took them the way he came. So God is never going to lead us in a direction where we have never traveled before. So he's sending us to a place that we are familiar with. He's sending us to a place that look, they know you. Yeah, they don't believe that God sent you. They don't believe that God is working with you because they understand who they are, but they don't understand who he is in you. God always chooses those that look foolish. He said, I have chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Those things that look like nothing, those things that are base. These are the things that I have chosen that no flesh will ever glory in my sight. So God has chosen the foolish things. He has chosen the thing that men have rejected. He has chosen the thing that seemed to be a base. These are the things that he has chosen. So be not discouraged. Be not discouraged because God is on our side. He is working with us. He is working on us. He is doing all that he needs to do to prepare us for the call and for the chosen position that he is going to place us in. In the name of Jesus, Yahshua, the Holy One of Israel. You know, I just thank God on today you guys and it's been a minute it's been a minute since I've been up here the, the, the battle has been great the battle has been strong you know and, and I'm not going to give Satan any hype but I, I just want somebody out there might be going through the same battle and you know and, and, and part of the battle you know because I don't know sometimes you go to a rim See, because it's based on your calling and where your position is in the body of Jesus Christ. You know, because the higher up you go, the colder it's getting. <laughs> it get cold because, you know, the, the, the mountains got the snow. It get colder. The higher up you go, you start dealing with the coldness. You start dealing with the atmospheric changes. The air gets thinner. You understand? You're not dealing with the, the, um, the bottom creatures anymore. You're dealing with principalities. You're dealing with spiritual wickedness. Those that are sitting in the high places. These are rulers of the darkness. They rule rule over people that remain in darkness because and this is their feed the sheep is their feed but God said that he went to Pharaoh and he said you're gonna let my people go I, I don't care what it's gonna take but he knew that Pharaoh would not co um, cooperate he knew that Pharaoh would reject what Moses said when he sent Moses to Pharaoh so you have to understand because you know I, I know I cried a little bit and said God now you know I mean did you know I mean and, and you know and, and, and this 
this is not just for warfare's sake, but this is also for character because he's establishing in us as we go through the process of warfare and all these things, he's establishing in us character. He's giving us his character. You know, um, he's refining us and showing us the things that he do not want inside of us because many people want to go and do ministry, but they first have to get this stuff out of them so they don't hurt God's people. And so the, the refiner's fire, it, it comes through the deliverance. Yeah, yeah, it comes through the deliverance. It's an ugly situation. It's a shameful situation. But Jesus said, as he went through the process, of, yeah, he went through the process. He said that he was despising the shame. He despised the shame that he had to endure. But it was the joy that was set before him that made him to endure the cross. He endured the cross because of the joy that was set before him. Hallelujah. So we must understand that there is a cross that we all must bear. Jesus said it. Deny and pick up your cross. Deny and pick up your cross. You know, people... You know, they want to count you out. Don't let them count you out. Don't let them count you out. You got to go through a process. And when we go through the process so we can be free, freedom comes with a price. It, it's going to cost you something to be free. Men died in the Civil War for us to be free. You understand? I'm, I'm talking about the black culture. That whites and blacks came together so we could be free. Okay? Well, we have to go through something to be free. There's a price that has to be paid for other people to be free. Okay, and I'm going to show you that. Okay, so then um, he went on to say that he didn't know his God. And, and this is the third verse. And they said, the God of the Hebrew have met with us. Let us go and pray the three days journey into the desert and sacrifice unto the Lord our God. Lest he fall upon us with the pestilence or with the sword. And the king of Egypt said unto them, Whereunto, where, wherefore do ye Moses and Aaron let the people, <laughs> let the people from their work, um, um, let the people from their works, get you unto your burdens? And Pharaoh said, Behold, the people of the land now are many, and ye make them rest from their burdens. Listen now. And Pharaoh commanded the same day the taskmasters of the people in their officers saying, ye shall no more give the people straw to make brick. Now listen, ain't that just like the devil? Ain't that just like the devil? The devil, the devil, yeah, yes, pastor. Yes, pastor. I, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. Ho hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got to drive. You, hallelujah. Glory to God. Isn't it just like the pharaohs of our time too? To put more pressure on when you're trying to come out? To put more pressure on when God is pulling you out? The pressure is going to become heated. It's going to become graphic. It's going to become intense. It's going to get ugly. Oh yeah, it's going to get pretty ugly. But don't you quit. Don't you give up. Because God, if he has ordained it, if he has called you for such a time as this, he will fortify you. He will empower you to come on through it. So you can be that deliverer for somebody else. But Satan, he always want to pull, you know, the rug. He always want to put more pressure. He, he's a child abuser. I know about the, uh, a little bit of that. You understand what I'm saying? He's a child abuser because he goes too far. He always beats you till you don't feel nothing. You understand what I'm saying? He always go too far. But we must continue to trust in the love of the Lord. Loving him is our greatest quest. Loving him with our life. Loving him with our desires. Loving him with everything. God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above what we could ever ask or think. And this is what it comes to at the end of the day. Our faith is on trial. And the, 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 the trial of faith, remember the Bible say that faith work about what? Love. So love is what calls faith to be in operation. And so when we don't have love in our heart, that's why our faith cannot operate. And so we have to love people. The way that we love ourselves. See, if you love yourself, then you know how to love your neighbor. And I didn't say based on how your neighbor treats you. I said you got to love your neighbor in spite of your neighbor. Because this is the way of the Lord. See, this is how we know that God is being birthed in us. That he lets us even love our enemy. And when the enemy keep coming at us. And when the enemy keep coming against us. You know, 
you feel sorry for the enemy. Why? Because you know that you are a child of the king. You are a child of the most high. And they don't understand that you have been chosen for this hour. You have been chosen for such a time as this. They don't understand that because you seem to be insignificant. You seem to be no one. And that's okay because you aren't anyone except God be in you. Okay? So so, so it doesn't matter what they think. <laughs> it's all about who he is in us. So it takes the trousers of life. It takes opposition. It takes the pharaohs. It takes the systems of this world. It takes religious dead doctrines of this world to produce God. To produce God. And how do he come on the scene? Because we have to believe him. Because we have to believe him. And it is faith that produces our God to the world. Yeah, we, we are brought before the throne room of God by faith. But God is brought before the world. He is brought before the world by our faith. Yes, so he is glory when we believe him. You know, that's real praise. Praise is when you believe him in spite of. When you believe him no matter what it look like. You, you're praising him. Every time you say, God, I know that you can do all things. God, I know that you are the great I am. Lord, I love you no matter what. And even like the three Hebrew boys, if I die in this fire, it will not eliminate that you are God. That you are God. It doesn't matter about me as much as it is about him. So we must understand that this is not about us individually. But it is about him and all of us collectively that he will bring us together to make us one body, one body, because it's time to collect the harvest. It is things taking place right now in our world. And we must transition, saints, and, and you that are not saved and you that are not saved. And I'm going to tell you something. And I remember when I first got saved, I just want to say this for those that are struggling. I said, God, Satan going to win over me. Why did I say that when I first got saved? Because he, I said, he'd been here um, 2,000 years or longer, and, and he got all the, all the floor. He know everything. I don't know nothing. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say it like the Italians I, I live with stay. I, I live with in Howard Beach. They say, I, I don't know nothing. I don't know nothing. You know, you know, like that Sylvester Stallone voice. You know, just kind of hear it. Yeah, yeah, because, because he has the upper hand when you're, when you're new in this thing. It seems that he has the upper hand, but he doesn't have the upper hand. Because God chose us. He chose us because we were weak. So he can be strong. He chose us. He chose us for this hour. And so Moses had to go to Pharaoh. He had to go back to his old place. Yeah, you got to come home sometime. You, you, you had to go back to the old place. The old place. The place that said that you would never be nothing. The place that said that nothing ain't going to never happen for you. The place that say that you know, you're going to be this way until the day you die. You got to go back. Because the table that he has set for you is in the presence of your enemy. It's that you cannot run from the enemy and expect your plate, your, 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 the table to be spreaded. The table is going to be spreaded before your enemies. Yet, yes, it's before your enemies. And so he'll take you to the familiar territory. He'll take you to the place that has rejected you. He'll take you to these places so he can get the glory out of your life. Because he has to show Pharaoh that nothing can stop him from doing what he said. Because he is the Lord our God. He is the word of God. He is the word of God. You hear what I'm telling you? And if he spoke a word, that word must be fulfilled. It will never return unto him void. So sometime God will allow us to hide on the backside of the desert. God bless you, first lady. It's good to see you. Good to see you, woman of God. Hallelujah. Sometimes we must hide on the backside of the desert. He'll let us hide for a little bit, and then he'll send us right back to the place we ran from. It all depends on if you ran. I ran, and so he sent me right back from the place that I ran from. So you got to stand in the midst of adversity. You have to stand in the midst of all of the pain. I don't care how bad it looks. Remember Jesus say, I despise the shame. I despise the shame. It's a shameful thing to have God pent on this. Yeah, but God said, but it was because of the joy that was set before it. The Bible say that when we are standing in a place of deliverance, can you believe this? Coming out of the womb of flesh, coming out of the womb of old systems, coming out of the womb of old doctrine, coming out of this womb, your head is now being viewed in the spiritual plane. I mean, the angels are rejoicing because they see your head coming through the womb of the spirit. And yeah, but the body is still being whipped on because it ain't got all the way from 
on the other side yet. Oh yeah, we're passing over now. We're passing over now. Do you hear what I'm saying? So the body is still being whipped on by the enemies. It's being whipped on. Yeah, they're talking about you. It's being whipped on. Yeah, they're slandering. It's being whipped on. But don't you worry about it because it's all for the Christ. It's all for the anointing. It's all for him. And oh yeah, that others might be free. And so freedom comes with a price. We can't say that we are called to do the will of the Lord and we are not free. It is so many people today that are standing in pulpits, but they are not free. They are not free from lasciviousness. They are not free from, you know, um, from, from, from abuse. They're not free from a whole lot of things. I know because I went out there. I was ministering with all of the issues still inside of me, but God will not let you go up until you go down. You got to go down in order for you to go up. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Give him the glory. Give him the glory. He is worthy to be praised. Oh, hallelujah. So Moses, who was sent to a God, uh, you know, Pharaohs were gods, to a God, a little God with a little G, to let him know that I came to get my people. And the God that I serve say you need to let him go. Because if you don't let them go, there's going to be consequences. This is what, this is what Moses told Pharaoh. And, and so I'm going to go, I'm going to skip over to the seventh chapter of um, Exodus. And I'm going to start at the first verse. And the Lord said unto Moses, see, I have made thee a God to Pharaoh. And Aaron, thy brother, shall be thy prophet. Listen to this now. God ain't no joke. He ain't no joke. Most people don't even believe him. You know, people that were preachers, they became atheists. And it's, it's not because God is not, but when you are trapped in a religious system that can only give you, you know, religion and, and there's no doorway to the kingdom because nobody has labored to enter in. Nobody has died. So others will live. Yeah, because the Bible said that the laborers are few. You have to labor to enter into this place. This place is not a place that you can just go into. You can just go into a church and you can just become what you want to be in a church. But in order to get into the kingdom, you got to labor to enter in. God bless you, um, um, Sister Catherine. It's so good to see you, woman of God. You got to labor to enter in. Yes, you do. And so there's going to be pain in this labor. Yeah, it's going to be labor pains because you got to work against the order of your own nature. You got to work against the order of the program that you've been sub sub subjected to. If any of you have um, been reading my page, it looked like I just went a little left um, yesterday because I put up all these um, posts about um, programming because I want people to know that if you're living out of somebody else's information you are not connected to yourself and so this is why God is calling us inward towards the kingdom of God it's inside of us and it's a, it's a travesty that many churches don't know how to get in and they don't know how to bring you in and it's all right for a while that we go and we do the rituals it's all right for a while that we go and do all of the things that you know make us feel good on the outside as if we've done something right because we have went to the house of God not going against none of that but there must be a, a, a desecration time where we have to desecrate the old man that that because because if not the desecration gonna be in the temple and you see that you can see the desecration in the temple because there's been no self denial and so there comes a time where we have to be led into the holy place and the holies of holies and in this place there is no tr <laughs> there is no playing around with God you understand you cannot play around in these places because you die in these places so people have found comfort on the outside on the skirts of the border. They have found comfort in that place. But there is a shift that has taken place in our world. And this shift requires us to put off the old man and to move into something new. Look, I got to tell you something. God is not playing. He is ready for every Pharaoh. He is ready for every entity that is coming against the will and the in the in the in the, in the purpose of God in the life of his people. When he said Pharaoh let my people go, he meant it. He meant minute. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? And that's when the war is no longer yours. That's when the war become his. Because when he he sent, his, he sent Moses, he was just a mouthpiece. That's all it was. He was just a mouthpiece. But when he get involved, he stands up off his throne. Then it's over. 
It's over. And God have mercy on the soul of them that did not hawk in, into his voice. God have mercy on them. You understand? So you, you cannot judge a person by their trial. You cannot judge a person by their circumstance. You cannot judge a person based on what they're going through or coming through. Because these are the processes of life that we all must go through. We all got to go through it in order to get into the kingdom of righteousness. We got to go through. And so it gets ugly. Yes, it does. It it's ugly. Before Moses can be the mouthpiece for God, he had to become a fugitive. You understand what I'm saying to you? Hallelujah. God bless you, Brother David. Hallelujah. So I'm, 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 I'm going to go here one more time, then I'm going to take you somewhere real quick. Because God ain't got time to be playing with people, I'm telling you now. Not when you're standing in the way of what belongs to him. Now, there are some people that are born in Egypt. And Egypt will be the place they die in, you know. They love Egypt. They love the onions and, and that other stuff, the garlic. They love Egypt, you know. They love being in bondage to another man's decision, another man's, you know, agenda, another man's, you know, structure and, and way of the, and, and way to, they love that. They feel as if they're doing something righteous. But it's not about a man. It's about God and what he created you to be. If you don't never become what he created you to be and you stay dedicated to temples, temples that are not leading you into the kingdom of righteousness, that you might be developed and made what God has called you to be because that's what they're supposed to be doing. They're supposed to be bringing you into the kingdom, the kingdom of righteousness. What is righteousness? It is what God said about you, being in right standing. How are you in right standing? Because you are exactly what he created you to be. You are fulfilling the purpose that he designed you to fulfill and so when you are standing in a temple and you are happy in Egypt that's okay that's that's for you but for those that want to be free for those of us that God has called out of the imprisonment of the world system those that he has called out of the imprisonment of church system he said that Pharaoh you're gonna let him go if you don't let him go I'm gonna get involved I'm already involved in their life but I'm gonna get involved in your life and so we have to understand that there is a process that we all must come through God bless you Pastor Bridget it's so good to see you woman of God hallelujah Glory to God. And so I want you to know, don't be discouraged on today. Because I know the battle. I told you, when you're coming through the womb, when you're coming through the womb, you're, you're, I mean, the angels are rejoicing because they see another one being born. That's a real birth right there. They see another one being born. They see the head of that, 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 that person about to be crowned by the Holy One of Israel. Oh, yeah, Jesus say, I'm king, but I'm going to crown you. Okay? So when they see the head coming through, when they see it coming through, what do they, they get angry. They, they, look, your body ain't all the way through. You ain't even all the way through the womb yet, and they still beating on you. They beating you coming on out of the other side. They beating you. They beating you all the way out. They beating you out. But thank God for the contractions. Thank God for the pressure. Because you need the contraction. That is a contract. Oh yeah, contraction come from the root word contract. And that comes from the covenant of God. And it's, it's a broken covenant with the world. Oh yeah, we're breaking our covenant with the world. We're saying yes, Lord, to your will. Yes, to your way. Whatever you want me to do. I don't care care about what Pharaoh does. I don't care about what the world is saying. I don't care about that. I just want to do your will. I want to do what you call me to do. Look, don't you worry about Pharaoh. Don't worry about it. But I'm telling you, if you want to be free, it comes with a price. It's not going to be without a price. It is a price tag to freedom unless you compromise. I mean, you'll be free financially if you compromise, but you won't be free spiritually. You know, you won't ever be happy because, you know, you sold God out for the fishes and the loaf. So you have to you have to come the right way. You got to come through the front door and you got to come through the slaughter. We have to be slaughtered. And all of us are called for our own house. Those that are chosen yeah, it's, it's for the house of Israel, not just our blood family, but the family of God. We are called to resurrect and to redeem what has been lost? Lost in travesty. Lost by lies and deceit. Lost. You understand? But in doing that, we have to put on the whole armor of God. Now, I'm going to say this one scripture. The 11th verse. Go, um, 11th verse, for you to just come in. And the 6th um, the, um, chapter. I'm not in the 7th chapter right now. 
the sixth chapter, listen now. Go in, speak unto Pharaoh, king of Egypt, that he let the children of Israel go out of his land. And Moses spake before the Lord, saying, Behold, the children of Israel have not hearkened unto me. Because, you know, after he told Pharaoh that, Pharaoh made their, their situation worse. And that's how the devil is. When God called you, when he chooses you, when he tell you what to do, he's going to make your situation worse. It's going to get worse before it gets better. Because obeying God causes an uproar. Because you're breaking covenant with the world. You're breaking covenant with people. And you you're, look, you're coming into agreement with what God said about you. You're coming into agreement with what God had planned about you. You're coming into agreement with a heavenly covenant. And so you cannot change into another element and think that the, the place that you are dwelling is not going to come against you. Yeah, they're going to come against you because you're leaving it. It's like joining a gang. You know, when you join this, the system, it's a gang. Yeah, and they come after you. Mobs of them. Yeah, they, they, they'll, they'll, they'll overrun you. They'll beat you. But if God is for you, the Bible say that he is more than the world against us. More than the world, not just religious system, but world systems. He's more than the world against us. If God is for us, and I tell you today that he is for each and every one of you. They have chosen to do it his way. They have chosen to go his way. He's for you. He's for you. Don't let circumstances deceive you. Don't let situations deceive you. You may not be where the next man is. You may not be where the next man is. But I'm telling you, you are not insignificant. Because you cannot look and judge a person based on their position. Not on the outside. You must judge based on the position they have in God. Oh yeah, because you know you can be at the top and still not be in God. So it's not about your position. It's not about that. Uh-uh. God said, they say that, that, that I am rich, but he said you are wretched. You are wretched as, 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 as well as I'm sitting here today. You are wretched, though you say you are rich. Yeah, God is not about material wealth. He is about spiritual redemption. He is about reconciliation. He is about bringing deliverance to a dying world. This is what he is all about. Oh, hallelujah. Give him the glory. Come on, give him the glory. He's worthy of all the praise. Oh, hallelujah. I'm almost done, you guys. I'm almost done. And so he said, he said, that, 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 that he gonna let him go. And Moses spake unto the church. He said, they got mad at me. They, they said, look, Pharaoh, he, um, hear me, who am uh, of an uncircumcised lips? He said, how then shall Pharaoh hear me who am of an uncircumcised look? He said, Pharaoh don't even know you. He don't even know who you are. Well, this is why God sent him. Because he wanted to show Pharaoh who he was. And see, some of us are in situations today, and we don't realize that God put us in that situation because he wanted to prove something to somebody that thought that they were more than what you were. Okay? They thought they were more than what you were. Yeah, they, they thought that they, they were more than what you were. Sometimes God has to send the little old insignificant one. Yeah, that's what they call you. The little, uh, that's what they called me, the little old insignificant one, the, the no name one, the one that don't nobody know your name, ain't nobody calling you. Yeah, they have, he had to send that to this one more. He's mad. You hear me? But I'm telling you that God is going, he's going to get the glory out of our lives. He's going to squeeze every bit of it out of it. This circumstance is going to bring glory. Your circumstance is going to bring glory. He needs something that looks to be diabolical. He needs something that looks to have Satan hands all over it. He needs something. You hear me? In order for his glory to be revealed. Oh yeah, he needed, he needed, he needed. Don't be discouraged. He needed, he needs your situation. He needs it because God is going to get the glory. He wants the glory. He, yeah, he wants the, unfil the uncircumcised to stand against him. Yeah, because if you have the love of God in your heart, you wouldn't do the people of God the way that you do. But you don't have the love of God in your heart. You, you can have the word in your mouth and not have the love in your heart. But God, when he calls us unto freedom, it is a heart that he is purifying. He said he's taking out that heart of stone and he's going to put us a heart of flesh in there and we're going to know how to love the way he loved. We're going to know how to treat people the way he treat them. And this love is not always nicey-nicey, but love is also correction. But love and correction comes, the, the correction comes with the undergirding of love. Therefore, it would not become repulsive. You understand what I'm saying? So you can have truth and not have love and what you say becomes repulsive. Last scripture, you guys. Hallelujah. Pharaoh was making a living off these slaves, just like the world system is making a living. Now, there are some people that are called into the world system, you know, and, 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 and because we're called in every part of the world. But you got to realize that you call 
to every part of the world. You don't go and become a part of the world. You have to, because, I mean, how can the kingdoms of this world become the kingdoms of our God unless we're everywhere? But you don't become a part of it. You know, you're supposed to be the light in the midst of it. So we would want them to come over to where God is because we don't want anybody to be lost because people are thinking that money and, and position makes you blessed. Now, I'm going to say that those are attributes of blessings, but sometimes it can be an attribute of a curse because you can be in a position that you ain't qualified to be in. You can be in a position that Satan gave you access to or some leader or somebody from the world system, but you got to compromise everything about yourself, everything about your standards to hold on to that position. Well, you know, but it ain't never too late. It ain't never too late. I'm just saying that we are called to take dominion and we cannot take dominion except we be free. And if we are not free, then we cannot help others get free. But freedom do not come without a price. It doesn't come without a price. And before you get free, I want to say this one more scripture, and then I'm going to get off of here. Go with me to Ephesians right quick. Ephesians. Ephesians. That's, that's a good scripture. I love that scripture. I love the book of Ephesians. I hope you guys are getting something out of this. I pray the Lord is blessing you through this. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, in Ephesians... Listen to what the Lord said through Paul, okay? He said, for this cause, I, Paul, the prisoner. Did you hear what he said? Because once you come into that other rim, you become a prisoner. You're a prisoner. You are now in prison by love. Ain't it a wonderful thing? You're in prison by purpose. You're in prison by destiny. Isn't it wonderful? You're in prison by him. You didn't have to compromise. You didn't have to sell yourself out, sell out the will of God for your life. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's so beautiful. You know, it's sometimes you run to get help from people that are still in bondage themselves because they look like they are, you know, making it. They're, they're in high places, but they're still in bondage. How do you know they're in bondage? Because they're selling out for the filthy lucre. It's not about filthy lucre. The money will come because God said that he will add everything. And yes, Satan is going to try to close up every door because he's looking for us to compromise. We cannot compromise the will of the Lord. And when we stand, in spite of all things, there will be a wealth that will come that you will never, ever need again. I promise you, you won't have to ask for anything ever again. Your, your buckets will overflow. You will not only be blessed, but you will be a blessing to many. I mean to many. I'm not talking, I'm not talking about no little bit of stuff. When you pass the hundredfold test, because there are 30, there are 60, and then there's that hundredfold. When, if you pass that hundredfold test, you're going to get it all. You're going to get it all. You hear me? You're going to be able to be a blessing to the kingdom of righteousness. Help other people to unplug from a diabolical system that is now almost denouncing God. Where, where, where the covenant of God is no longer being activated in school systems and businesses and everything. I mean, we, we have to get in our places, y'all. It's going to cost you some, though. It's a price for freedom. You're going to be ashamed. It's going to get ugly. But at the end of the day, there's going to be joy, just like when you had that baby. So let's just do this, this last scripture, because I know it's time now. Hallelujah. And then I'm going to pray with you real quick. For this cause, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles. He was prisoner for the Gentiles, okay? He became in prison so he can bring deliverance to the Gentiles. If, if ye have heard of the dispensation of grace, I think, I think this is the one that I want. I made the wrong one, you guys. Okay. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. Now, a lot of people are not walking worthy, but you got to be made worthy of the vocation because you can't handle the word of God in, you know, unrighteousness, with craftiness. But we have to walk worthy of the vocation wherewith we are called. Okay. And a lot of people are not answering the call. But those that have been chosen, you ain't got no choice, so you might as well go ahead on. <laughs> do what you got to do, okay? Because if you're chosen to do, you're going to do it, you know, by choice or by force. And what's going to propel you to do it is love. Because if you love him, you're going to do it even if you don't want to. 
with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering. Did you hear that word? Long suffering, forbearing one another in love. Because that is the outcome of the delivery. It's love. You're going to love. You're going to love. You know, it doesn't matter the people that were used to hurt you. You know, they were just used as instruments. You know, they are the smith and the burner that God put in his hand to sharpen and to bring us to our rightful place in him. So don't get angry with them. Forgive them. Unplug your heart. Forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. And, and, and ask God to have mercy on them because they're going to have to pay the price for what they've done. So God have mercy on their soul, you know. And so this is the last scripture. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. And that's where I'm going to end it. Oh, no, I'm going to do the fourth verse. There is one body and one spirit. That's why there's no black, there's no white. There's no old, there's no young, there's no male, there's no female, there's no Jew, there's no Gentile. But there is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, and one baptism. Yep, we are all baptized into him, into him. One God, one father, ain't, ain't no, nobody else my daddy. One father, ain't nobody else your daddy, not if you was born by him. Um, one God and one father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. Isn't that wonderful? God bless you. Thank you for joining me. I miss you guys. I miss you. You just don't know how much, you know, I had to come on. I'm coming, you know, my head is already there. So, you know, it's all right. But the beating is bad, but it's worth it. I love you. And I love the Lord. And you guys keep moving forward. Don't let nothing stop you. Get to where you got to go. It's going to be opposition, but don't you let nothing stop you. If you got to do, if you work, if you call to the world system, hold on to what he's called you to do. But go into that world and bring them in. Bring them in. I'm talking Beyonce. I'm talking Jay-Z. Um, these are souls. These are kingdoms that need to be won over to the kingdom of our God. And I didn't say stay with the world because, you know, a lot of times they say they love the Lord, but they stay in the world. No, you got to choose. You have to choose. Either you're going to sing for the world or you're going to sing for the Lord. You got to choose. So there is no divide. Okay. So I love you guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. And I see you guys.